Y'all, this is Joker's Gallery right here on the Fago Lovers Network for another edition of Five Piece coming at you today. Another Halloween episode, so we got to keep it with the wicked shit. We're going to celebrate the one year anniversary of Mausoleum, the classic album. I don't know if you can call it classic, it's only been out a year, but I'll call it yeah. a classic. <laughs> that motherfucker, I don't have one skipper on it. Before we get into the top five, go ahead and introduce the panel right here beside me, rocking the forever face. You got Mr. Mike Sears, host of. Speak Your Clout Podcast and UFCD on Studio 17. And the boys, you know the vibes. Don't live evil, motherfucker. Hell yeah. Smaggy bitch ass on the regular. But right below me, you got the Larry King of the Underground, Mr. Luke the Goon. Yes, what's good? Yeah, I guess we can call it an instant classic. There you instant go. Instant classic. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to do this one. Mausoleum has a close spot to my heart, mainly because I did the listening party. With everybody, Bill, Lee, Joe, and Slasher Dave. Shit was so much fun. Uh, so I got to hear the album. Well, that wasn't the first time I heard the album, but <laughs> I got to listen to it with everybody else together, including Slasher Dave. It was a lot of fun. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. As always, we've got a special guest joining us. Be Mr. DJ Rascal today, doing big things, including an upcoming appearance at Camp Zool. So wanted to have him on this. Um, Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, there really he is. Awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's refreshing. Thank you. Right there on the official flyer, as you can see, November 12th will be at Camp Zool, so make sure you don't miss that shit. The first ever Camp Zool, you don't want to miss that shit. The lineup's been coming out, and it's absolutely phenomenal. I'm talking yeah. Blaze, Boondocks, Super Famous, Axe, of course. Yeah, light. That that was the crazy announcement for me. Light. Yeah. I was like, man, I haven't seen that dude like since he left Psychopathic. So I was like, damn. Yeah, yeah, that shit was fresh. I can't wait. And then also seeing Straight Jacket on there, it really just kind of nails home the fact that LLE is doing big things because you've got everybody from every camp appearing. Right. Uh-huh. right. And that's the first time you can say that since 2017. So shout out the fucking. All the Zooligans that made it possible, and of course, to Bill, Joe, and Lee for doing that shit big. And that's exactly what I was hoping that LLE was going to do is unite that shit. And you can see with the acts they've got on the bill, it's what they're doing. So that's fucking super dope. Yeah, and they're bringing back like old heads like Diabolic will be there. Uh, SON, formerly Scrub King, is going to be there. Like, it's, man, it's going to be wild. <laughs> I'm so excited, man. It's going to be so crazy. Yeah, I was an attendee at the first gathering of the Juggalos, and it just gives me the same vibes as that because it's, like I said, it's the first time. You don't know what's going to happen. There's only one first time. Don't miss it. If you can make yeah. it, fucking make it. It's like it's like right it's like right on the border of like four or five states. So like if you're in one of those four or five states, you got no excuses at this point. Yeah. From what you were telling me, it's – Basically near Cincinnati, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, J- Cincinnati's a huge clown town. So, Juggalos know all about Cincinnati. If you've ever been to Bogarts or anything like that, to CICP, Twisted, Kaimouth Kings, anybody like that, it's right around that same area. So, it's it's not that far from a bunch of Juggalos I know. That no, it's, you know, three hours from me. So, that's definitely within driving distance. Yeah. yeah. Before we get into the actual top five, just talk about how you first got into Zool before we get into the top five. I I remember them getting a lot of hype on uh, Chuck Reef show. He always had the uh, the Zool stuff behind him and things like that. And leading up to that gathering, he was, he was saying that there was uh, 
MNE Act that hadn't signed yet that was going to be at that gathering. And it, there was a lot of hype saying, because looking at the lineup, it was obviously going to be Zool. They were pretty much the only ones that fit that fit that criteria, and it was on the level that would be getting signed by MNE. So they started getting a lot of hype there. And I remember that uh, sampler they passed out at that uh, at that gathering. And then the show, the show was m more highly attended than a lot of the featured acts that year more than the ones that you know that that are being pushed as as headline headliners of the gathering or whatever that zool show was promoted so oh, well yeah, by them downstairs. <laughs> it was promoted so well by them and and by their camp and just pretty much the hype i was talking about that was going around on the internet that there was a nice crowd there for that performance at the gathering that's when i really started paying attention to them and then once the almighty came out i was like game over <laughs> sign me up for whatever they released for the next 10 years what about you mike 2017, man, I first heard of them. A lot of ninjas on my page were going nuts on Facebook how dope the Necronomicon EP was. Some motherfucker said it was better than uh, Wizard of the Hood. And uh, it kind of put me off, you know? And yeah. my, my grandfather died around that time. I wasn't in the mood for no new shit. I was like, fuck this shit. But fast forward to 2018 and the announcement of m and &E signing them, I went back and listened to Head of Horns and Psycho Volume One and Echo Nine. I mean, what the fuck was I smoking, yo? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And then I see the Forever Face uh, was on that sampler, and I bumped that on YouTube. I was like, oh my god! And hearing Lee Cobble for the first time, he's the nicest <laughs> member lyrically in my opinion. Yeah. You know, Billy's my guy, but I think Lee's the nicest and uh, mind blown. And these motherfuckers were like rhyming over boom bap shit, not some corny shit. Like these fucking thousand other juggalo rappers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And hit home and Zool again for life, motherfucker. You already know what it is over here. Hell yeah. Me, didn't really remind me of fucking House of Crazies. There was three of them, like you yeah. said, it was that classic hip hop sound. And so, I, and you know, being a fucking twisted fan, a House of Crazy fan, I was all about it as soon as I heard it. What about you, Luke? Uh, well, um, I've talked about this before, but I went through like a long period where I wasn't really listening to really anything in the scene very long time. And, uh, but I was still like kind of paying attention. Like I would listen to the new Joker's cards when they dropped and I would occasionally look through Fago lovers and, um, uh, right around the time it was a little before AXC signed to MNE, uh, Fago lovers put out this long lost interview with Allah Zulilu. And it was like, um, I guess like the audio was fucked up or something. So they just like transcribed it. And so I'm like, I don't know why I clicked on it or anything. Maybe it was the look. I don't remember. But I was like looking through it and they had, they posted a gathering performance by them. And I watched it and then they did like that. I don't remember what, I don't know if they did the guts theme in that one, but you know, sometimes in the middle of the shows when they do like their little like parody song and they like extra, I think it was when they were exercising and Joe was like, fucking, I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so I went back and I listened to psycho and uh head of horns and that shit. And like, honestly, I wasn't like immediately swept up into it at that point. The almighty came out and I was like, all right, this is dope. But then I was really like, hook line and sinker when church of zool came out because that's probably still my favorite zool project church of zool because that's like so blasphemous so hard and that's the shit that i've always liked like i don't like it when stuff gets too like cartoony and kind of corny and you know all funny i like it more like i like the horror core aspect of the music with a little bit of dark humor you know i think icp really early icp really blended that shit very very well and I think Zool are are getting there. That you know they'll do the really kind of funny stuff, and then they'll do their really like horrorcore shit, and then they're slowly starting to blend that shit. I think better and better as they go on each project. Um, but yeah, that's the long winded story of how I found Zool. What you rest? Uh, I guess uh, so for me, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to agree with you. Uh, it was at the gathering, and um, I heard about the uh, M and E act. And uh, this whenever everything was all was at the height of you know all that drama, so uh, I really was just kind of just you know just gather. And uh, I caught the set, and um, you know I dug it, I liked it. You know I didn't know too too much. And then it was right after the Almighty had dropped. Um, I want to say I gave it a listen. 
I still didn't really, um, you know, it didn't, I, you know, I, I dug it. You know, it was new music. I'm all about some new music. I love some horrorcore. You know what I'm saying? I love the vibes they were giving off. Uh, but I, for some reason, you know, but I think I was kind of going through my little transition as well, too. And then um, it was right whenever I dug into um, uh, Church of Zul that I was like, all right, you know, let me see what's really going on with these cats. And, and then uh, I was also my homie Sturgis, you know, he'd come to the Pittsburgh shows and he'd all be rocking his hat. And I'm like, who are these cats? And actually, I saw AXC when they came to Pittsburgh um, with, uh, I want to say, say it was the Axis family, I want to say. Or I want to say one of those, but um, I ended up seeing them, you know, uh, when they came to uh, Diesel and Southside, and um, you know, they, they put on a dope set. But I said I still wasn't really, uh, you know, too 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 dug in. But it was right around time that um, uh, Church of Zool, and uh, I really started paying. And then I went back, and I did what Mikey did. I went back and I started checking out Psycho. I started checking out Necronomicon. Dude, whenever and like you said, uh, Mikey, that boom back. Remember that get back on, on oh, Psycho? Oh, yeah. Dog. <laughs> I'm like, fucking proud of you, dog. Yeah, dog. <laughs> dog, when I heard that, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, wait a minute. Like, wait. So, <laughs> so and then um, then I dug back into uh, Head of Horns. So, yeah, I, I, right around, saying, you know, would you look right around uh, Church, uh, Church of Zool is whenever I was like, all right, I'm fucking with these guys. And, uh, yeah, man, ever since. Yeah, I think, like, us old juggalo uh, are like a little bit jaded sometimes <laughs> and it takes it takes a bit to impress us you know what i mean oh, yeah. and then you know yeah. zool they really and well it's but you know they 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 keep hitting you know it, what i mean because sometimes yes, you can put yeah. out you can put out one good project but to mm-hmm. put out one good and up yourself every time mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. a feat you know what i mean and zool completely brought me back into the scene and got me listening to you know yeah other people like fun time and fans and the hooligans and Cody Manson and S O N and all these people like they've, they pulled me back into the scene. So yeah, I totally agree. it's that old, it's that excitement that I had when I was like 12, 13 years old, you know, listening to fucking Malenko for the first time when it came out, you know what I mean? It's that they've, they've captured that magic, you know, I remember. No, go ahead, brother. I was gonna say, I remember whenever you did your uh, Necro Two listening party, and you were saying how the first Necronomicon wasn't necessarily one of your favorites, and you said it's actually one of your least favorites. And um, I thought that was interesting because, you know, I felt that they, and like you said, how somebody compared it to Wizard of the Hood, and yeah. I'm like, you know, I can see where that cat's going with it, you know, but for me, new mute, like you said, you, you have to really break through and. We, like the older jugglers, we have this kind of shell. It's like, all right, you know, yins are cool, but like, all right, you know, I'll see you in a year. If I see you in a year, then all right, bet. Then we'll then I'll rap with you. you know what I'm <laughs> and um, so uh, when that Necro Two came, out, I was super excited for that. You know what I'm saying? Super excited. So that's just for for me when Necro Two came out. And I was at work, working an overnight shift, and I'm watching Yins's podcast, and I'm trying to work and shit, trying to watch <laughs> podcast, and. Yeah. Um, but I was so excited. I was so excited. I had that excitement when Necro 2 came out. So that, for me, that was like my Malenko, man. And mm-hmm. and, and I, I'll say, I'm 30. So, like, I can't even say that, like, I'm, like, an old-school juggalo, you know, because I got some of my homies I still look up to. But, you know, it's someone who's kind of, I guess I could say, been around and, and been, been versed in this shit long enough, man. You definitely do get that old-school feeling from Al for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, Church of Zool is uh, special for me. I'm on that motherfucker. Yes. <laughs> I always say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For Maybe sure. Maybe EP too, Jesus. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, love, I love how it ends with, like, the whole, the beginning is, like, all dark, blasphemous shit, and then it ends with Zooligans. You know what I mean? Which is, like, perfect for me. All menders are important. If you're a juggalo, you know that. You know, pass me by. There's some classics. So Zooligans at the end wraps it all up in a nice package. Loved it. That's what I was about to say is Zubigans from that album is what really made me excited for upcoming albums is because it just showed a different range that you hadn't heard yet from them dudes and they did it really fucking well. And another thing we hadn't mentioned 
is the videos. As soon as I seen the uh, Axis Family video, that's another thing oh, that, that instantly oh, made yeah. instantly made me a fan of those dudes. I'm a big visuals dude. Like Shockumentary is one of the big reasons I got into ICP. Uh, we don't die is one of the big reasons that I fucking started repping Twisted and rocking the fucking spider leg hair and shit. So like seeing that visual and having that visual and being done as well as it was, I do believe it was uh, Loki that fucking yeah. did that video. It was super fucking dope and. And that's something else that really helped me connect to them for sure. The uh, the announcement video is really dope too. The MNE did. Yeah. Where it's like there's like the church shit and all that. It's really I, I really like that announcement video as well. Oh yeah. I had to uh, I had to dig back because you know like I said so like for me and like you know it, it was nice too because someone like me you know and like I said didn't grant you know digging back but like to be able to like catch the end of trunk video even though it was hard as hell to find yeah. you know like I'm pretty sure it was like unlisted yeah you had, you had to dig for it yeah 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 but um it was so nice to be able to dig back and like have some shit to like at least be able to like you know like you can find a new group and then you play it you play that, that album over and over and over and over again so luckily for me I was able to have like three or four albums to run back on and mm-hmm. catch up on get the speed catch out the visuals just, you know what I'm saying things like that Dude, it, it, it was really, I, I say this was, like, for, it was definitely refreshing, man. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and now new people get deathbed, so. <laughs> so, you know. If, if you're allowed, if you're, if you're old enough. Yeah, yeah if, if you verify eight times on YouTube <laughs> yeah. that you're over 21, they might let you watch it. It's, you know, like, it, like, I, I got, like, Luke, you know, I was like, I, I'm sitting, like, you know, I sit in my kitchen, I get my little bougie kitchen TV, my boy calls it, and um, I'm sitting there, I'm like, wait, I gotta do what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to Tom Martina for that one. He killed that one. Definitely, definitely. I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll be talking about that song and video on this countdown. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and get into the <laughs> yeah. countdown at the top yeah. five. Started out at my five spot. It'll be L I F E Life. <laughs> Other than the fact just being a fucking dope ass song and something you hadn't really heard them another style that you hadn't really heard them do before, I remember their Attack of the Ninjas performance, which I do believe was on New Year's Eve of of 2020, and that song fucking summed up tw- summed up 2020 so fucking perfectly. <laughs> I remember them doing the chorus is like "Let it fuck it, Ed," and like yeah. Lee being in the background, tw- "Fuck 2020, let it's it so fucking Ed." No <laughs> Straight up, it just went so perfect with that, and like that's like the yeah. song of 2020 to me after seeing that. So I had to put it on my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that, that actually definitely sticks with me. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was the. I think that was the second single actually that came out as it well, um, and it yeah. kind of fit with the whole theme uh, when they were leading into it. Axe is dead. <laughs> you know, they were running running that kind of campaign. Axe is dead. Yeah, um, a lot of so people like, thought Axe Axe broke up when Bill posted that. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I remember hating. Yeah. Every time. Say, so, no, nah, man, you just you gotta die to go to a mausoleum. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I hear uh, LIFE, man, and, and like, and like, like, like you said, like, like fuck 2020, and, that, and yeah. I hear it in my head, no stimulus, no money. I can't listen to the song without hearing the alley, and it makes it so much better. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That, shit, that shit definitely made it ill, man. Yeah. 2020 anthem right there and like i said i think it was even on new year's eve on the perfect time to be singing that song so just fucking title bowl and that song perfectly so i put it in my yeah. five spot. Yeah. All right. Number five for me, the first single, man. 
Blood Moon and Back. Save you from this world that loves to hate you. I know a place I can take you. If you trust me enough, just look up at the moon. The blood will consume us all, and he'll come for us soon. And there's nothing you can do about it. No, I can't live without you. So it is what it is. That's how it go. Oh, my hands just ripped your throat. I found the jugular and slid it slow. You heard of hell? Yeah, this a different low. I heard that shit and I was like, oh man, here we go. Slash it, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you got a decent system in your whip or whatever. That shit bangs too, you know? Love that shit. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, Lee Carver's verse, addicted to death. And sh every, what do you say? Addicted to death. Every yeah. time we fuck or some shit like that, yeah. <laughs> that's just fire, man. Uh, yeah, man, banging. They all can correct. Production's crazy, mm -hmm. and uh, the artwork to the single as well is dope. That like the red pepper face at the moon and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Luke uh, has a custom of Luke that. Yeah, one. I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One, yeah. Yeah, Tom did that one for me. Yeah, yep. Yeah, because yeah. I love that. I love that logo as well. The moon and shit. I actually have the Yo. decal in the back of my car as well. I have the decal as well. Um, yeah. I that song was... and she likes it rough. Handcuffed yeah, yeah. every time we fuck. I hate fucking up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, yeah, my number five is um, uh, Random Acts of Violence. Every victim I pick a make it randomly chosen. I'm keeping your eyes suck it till your brain is exposing. I'm unloading ammunition with the rack of emotion. That's my favorite slogan, posted up, covered in blood in a latex mask, drunk as fuck. A state board just passed. I never had a father, I was hated by my mother. Put the knife down right now. Freeze, motherfucker. Yeah, this song is sick. I love the I love the chorus. Serenaded by the sounds of people dying. No surprise, it's random acts of violence. And then I also really like Bill's verse on this is actually my favorite. Because at the end he does this voice where he's like this nerdy, nerdy little kid. And he talks about like getting a 3D printing a gun and ordering it and going to a going to a country club and shit. Yeah, I just love the, I just love that song. I think it's like it's kind of a hype song too. The way the chorus is, you're like, what the fuck, yeah, serenaded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, it's dope. When, but, but I, I'll, I'll uh, add to you with that one. Yeah, when Bill when Bill laid that, when I heard that, I was like, oh, all right, you know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, good. He's like, oh, good. He grabbed a hoodie yeah, yeah. and bolted it to the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that voice he's doing is hilarious. Yeah. Um, my turn? Yeah, so I guess my top, my my fifth would be uh, actually Mausoleum. Burnt alive, we turned to ash. Fuels the fire, light the gas. Resurrected by the mask, never found us dead, and now we're back.
say that, and, like, Mikey, as you said earlier, dog, and, like, I will say this real quick. Shout out to Slasher Dave, and, like, I'm just really starting to dig in, like, to his category. But, like, dude, that this one for me slapped so hard in my car. And I spent a lot of time in my car. So, you know, if it sounds right, if it sounds good in the car, I'll, I'll play it over and over and over again. And Mausoleum, for me, is one of the first ones that, like, you know, it, it just really hits, like, really – between that and then you guys ever <laughs> I'm just gonna sound random, but you know whenever it's like this is where the damn fuck was go when they die. Yeah, so yeah. You guys, you guys ever listen to uh like Children of the Corn uh, with Ice Cube? Oh yeah. That song oh yeah. Remember, remember fuck how yeah. Ice Cube would do the ad libs on that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the background, like you know, we ain't gonna do that. And that's that's it. I get that I get that vibe. I get that Ice Ice Cube vibe from just that song. And so for me. It like I don't know, like you know, it just brings me back. And I'm like I don't know, like I, it just really sticks to me. That's, that's just hell to me, man. You know, and like shit like that, like I don't say I pick up on it, but like if it, you know, it, it takes me somewhere, and like I'm like, yeah, dog, this is tight. So yeah, that's me and Mike just me, me and Mike just did a top ten corn song, and uh, Children of the Corn is my number three on there. So I definitely know the song you're talking about. I love that fuck right song. <laughs> yeah, dog. Yeah, and like and like I. I hear it, and it's just like, this is what a dead folks go with me, duh. And I, I just think about, like, I end up back in my head, I hear Ice Cube, you know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna take it no more, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. <laughs> like, yeah, dog. And then yeah, it just straight drops, up. And then just, and this shit just fucking, he's so grimy, you know what I'm saying? I fuck with it, man. Oh, yeah. Slasher Dave. Yeah, talking about like, Slasher. I really, I, yeah, I really like the hook on that shit, too. The hook is so dope. It, yeah. that, that'll like get stuck in my head while I'm working, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like my girl talking... gets mad at me because I'll just fucking, I'll, I'll just uh, be like, I'll wake up out of bed and I'll just be like walking around like, this is more than, <laughs> like, I'll be like, really, dude? <laughs> like, like just random hooks just be in my head and that's one of them. I'm like, mausoleum. Like, I don't know, yeah. man. Like... <laughs> and Mike and Raz have both brought up Slasher Dave, and you got to m- remember back whenever it got announced it, I think Luke was the one that announced it to pretty much everybody that he was going to produce the album. <laughs> a, a lot of people were kind of, uh, like, kind of weary of it because they have ex- come to expect one certain style from uh, Zool, and they didn't know if they were going to get it with that. So for everybody to, that you know, all the Zooligans pretty much united to say how much of a good job that he did on the production of it whenever people were kind of weary starting out that just goes you show you that he schooled it because people were waiting to hate on it but it was so good they couldn't yeah what's funny about that is like uh the i heard through the grapevine originally that it was going to be that well this is probably a wrong what i heard but somebody said they were going to work with mikey clark and i was like oh shit that's going to be fucking legendary and then I heard through the grapevine slightly before it was announced that it was going to be Slasher Dave. And then that made sense because, you know, Sp- Slasher Dave was uh, kind of learned under Mikey Clark. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So I was checking out his shit. And his shit is the shit that I fucking love. It's like it's like uh, Dark Synthwave, which I talked about on our non-Juggalo artist thing. And so I was listening to it. I was like, man, I love this fucking shit. Like, and so I was like, I was already hyped for the album just listening to Slasher Dave's other stuff, his solo stuff. And I was like, all right, this is going to be fresh because I love this shit, that Halloween spooky shit. And then, like, watching his lives on Instagram and him talking about Halloween and, like, like old haunts and, like, all that spooky shit, like, from when I was a kid, like, 90s and shit. I was like, I'm sold already. I don't even need to hear the album. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was super excited. And, yeah, the thing you're talking about how I announced it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was Carver I think, you announced, I, think you announced, I think you announced it to Bill <laughs> I Carver went on a live stream And said hey Slasher Dave is producing the whole album And I went oh cool I went I did my video put it out <laughs> And Bill had no idea that it had been announced That Carver said anything So I guess Bill found out through me Who the producer was <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works sometimes man that's how it goes sometimes information trickles and there's three of them who knows where the information is going you know yeah. it all works out yeah. <laughs> moving up to my four spot now the track has got a video from it as well It'll be the mask made me do it stab it through abdomen wipe the plate on my clothes watch the wound gush blood through the jagged eye holes my goals in life a triple digit murder total but when you face in my profile photo so you know bro
that's my number four as well. I think it's kind of like the lure song of the forever face. It like gave the forever face kind of like a lure in it. Like the forever faces will possess you and shit like that. You know, another soul that Tom poured in a mode. Like it's yeah. fucking, you know, just building lure around that motherfucker. And I mean, they already look fucking dope as shit. So you start building some lure around it, It's even fresher. Yeah. And, uh, I love, uh, I love the little references in it. Like, I love that they mentioned Tom. I thought that was so dope. And uh, I really love like uh, Joe's Joe's verse is so dope, especially at the end, because he's like, well, I'm gonna tell you like I told the police. And then it's like mask made me do it. It's so fucking dope. Yeah, uh, yeah I love the, I love the whole song. The the this is another song like there's a lot of I think of the mausoleum that's got kind of like a uh, kind of a hard like kind of like a rock sound, I guess I want to say. I don't know. It just goes really like hard, and this song is definitely one of them. Um, I would actually love to see Tom remake that music video because I know I think he even mentioned I think when I interviewed him that he would love to have shot the video for that. I think it would be really dope to get like a live like a live action Mass Made Me Do It music video with Tom Martino directing. That shit would be crazy because the music video or the song itself is crazy. It's wild. It's like off the wall. Like I think Joe talks about taking somebody's shin bone and fucking naked shit and yeah. fucking jerking off. And all- <laughs> it's fucking yeah. crazy. It's wild. That's something like that's something like thriller that you don't necess- necessarily have to make the video about the song either. You could have like a three to five minute intro to the song oh, yeah. and a three to five minute outro of the song. Mm-hmm. Put that motherfucker out on VHS. That shit will sell like old school VHS tape. That shit yeah, will no, fucking sell for sure. I just think it would be so dope. You shoot that, you start that video out with Tom pouring a forever face and then it gets shipped and a kid gets it and brings it home, opens it up, opens it up, you know, takes the, puts the forever face on and then boom, you know, it starts there. That shit would be dope. Yeah. And then let Tom work his magic on all that fucking yeah. gory ass effects that would be needed throughout the video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be a banger for sure. Yeah. That shit would be dope. We got your four spot, Mike. I already mentioned, man, the whole random acts of violence. That shit is just hard body. Hit a yeah. fucking gunshots and shit and fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the motherfucking serenaded by the sounds of people dying. No surprises. Yeah. Random acts of violence. Shit is hard, man. Definitely one of my favorite songs on the album. Slash a day with that production, man. What can I say? Love that shit. We covered too well. We body oh, that yeah. shit. Yeah, I, for, I forgot about the gunshots. <laughs> yeah, ready to match Yeah, yeah, that's him. yeah. yeah. It's fucking hard, bro. Oh, no, yeah. It's like a goddamn Ritus track or some shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, but for real, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, all day. Like I told you, it was coming back from the grocery store and I had it on. And I was like, God damn, this shit. I yeah. forgot how hard this shit was. You know? Yeah. <laughs> From the grocery store, actually. <laughs> 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 Gang banging yeah. on bank. So, you know, some motherfucking potential victims, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Shit. It's fire. Yeah, okay, so uh, I guess mine's up. Uh, we're, on, are we on number three already? Four. You, you already said you're four, so it goes over to Raz. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. yeah, that's why I lost. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're good. So, my four is actually going to be uh, Rigor Erectus. I used to dig you. That's why I dug you up. That's why I dug you up. I want to kiss you, but you ain't got no tongue. You ain't In the cemetery cause I lost all hope Got no friends, I'm a joke Got no bitch cause I'm broke I was being swallowed by my hopeless existence Until I noticed something glowing in the distance Thought it was cops and maybe lightning bugs I made my way to the spot No, it's drugs When you're broke as I am, that's like winning the lotto Only words on the back was eat the whole bottle So I did, don't wanna fuck up fate Then I woke up naked in a dug up grave The crickets are laughing and calling me stupid That was stuck on her casket I chew through it The rest is too gross, so I don't tell it often Just assume I hammered my nail in her coffin No side effects, so I don't feel sick But I awoke with a six inch magnet for a dick I used to dig you, that's why I dug you up I 
like I feel like I'm going to be out here throwing curves at everybody. That's but, um, no, not really, because that, that's my three. So I'll jump in on. We can yeah, jump yeah. in tag team this one. That's my three. All so right, we'll cool. both talk about it. Right on, dog. Hell yeah, man. Look, dog. That shit. Whenever I hear that shit, like, and I was talking to Luke really about it, and um, just to just to add it on the slasher, Dave, and um, you know, I just started digging into his, his category. Obviously, it's Halloween. And um, with you know, I kept hearing his name, kept hearing his name. So I'm like, let me check, let me check this shit, check this dude out. And um, you were saying how you know most of the album was produced by him, but mo- you know, pretty much all, almost all of it. I feel like if there's ever a song that wasn't by him, it was this one, only for the sheer fact that this shit's so funky. Like the shit that <laughs> gives you, it gives you like a little hop to it. Like, and that's why I say like, I, like if there was ever for me a live action video, it would have to be uh, Rigor Rectus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just like. I could see like some sort of like choreography, like on like some thriller shit, like just mm. dance, like you know what I'm saying, motherfuckers dance. Straight up, know. Yeah. like you know what I'm saying. Like I get that, like I play that shit and just like, and then, um, <laughs> and then the, end, the ending sealed it for me. The end, he's like performing kind of lingers on that beautiful corpse. Yeah. Like, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, yo, I'm like, what? Like I had to run that shit back, dog. I'm like, yo, I'm like what? I'm like, All right, yeah. But um, and yeah, Joe, Joe's verse too. Um, I can't. I, if I'm trying to blank right now, but Joe's verse on that track. Oh, he's like uh, he's like um, yeah. He's in. He's like in the graveyard and he fucking. Found the bottle and all yeah, that he's, shit. He's <laughs> like, you know, he's like, when your book is me, that's like winning the lotto. And yeah, I'm yeah. Just like, all right, man. you know. Um, it's it's so weird for me because like, and I Lee, I mean, uh, Mike. I'm with you so hard, dog. Like, I had to dug. I, I started digging back, and I am started digging into, you know, shit with Lee. And, like, I, I tried not to, like, have a favorite because, you know what I'm saying, I tried yeah. to, you know, keep everything. But, like, when, like, I I, I look forward to a Lee verse, you know what I'm saying? And, um, but, but these, this, this, for me, this one here, Joe fucking schooled it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Joe schooled it for me, you know? So that that's definitely my uh, number four. Going into the album, I remember Luke said that that, that was going to be a decisive song, so I was kind of paying attention to it whenever the first time I listened to it. First time I listened to it, I was like, man, this is kids gr- growing up listening to fucking Cemetery Girl. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. this is what has become of it after about 20 years it's festered and this is what's fucking happened and you even talk about going back to like those little ab libs at the end and shit that reminds me of fucking like classic icp riddle by so i immediately love that fucking song and like i was talking about with zooligans it just shows more range more shit that's gonna if they can do shit like this i want to hear what they can do for the next five years because it's not just one fucking certain style they're sticking to they're keeping it wide open so that's why i really like that fucking song it just another song that shows the range like zooligans yeah, I really say I really thought that song was gonna be more decisive than it was. So just well done, it, it couldn't be. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, uh, it's the mo- obviously it's the most different song on the whole album. Yeah, and like I just thought it. I I just figured that a lot of people would want the like the the horrorcore shit basically. That's pretty much the whole rest of the record. But I I haven't heard a single person say they really don't like that track. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, when I first heard it, I was like, man, this is like a summertime track. This is like you roll down the windows, you stick your arm out the side of the window, and you cruise and listening to Rigor Rectus, man. Like, <laughs> bro. And I was just gonna say the funny thing about Rigor Rectus is, um, during the listening party that I was doing, I was like dancing to Rigor Rectus, and it brought the stream down. <laughs> Rigor Rectus <laughs> took that stream down. I don't know if it got. Maybe it was like the jazzy vibes that got picked up through the algorithm. I don't know what it was, but that was the song where. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you know what it was. You know what it was. Whenever, <laughs> and the funny part is, my girl, and like it's, a, it's like I mean, I'll bring her up, but um, whenever like she, you know, she, like, you know how we are, man. You know, we get so inver- inversed in this shit, you know. So she's like, yeah, whatever, whatever. But whenever um, uh, Bill's like, I got money, I got love. Let's see what else pops up. And so she looked over at me and she'd be like, boner. And I was like, what the fuck? Was, so that's what probably got your stream flag. <laughs> <laughs> like, and like the chorus part is so fucking catchy. I used to dig you. That's why I dug you up. That's why I dug you up. I want to kiss you, but you ain't got no tongue. You ain't got no tongue, baby. Like, that shit is just catchy. You'll be singing that for the next fucking week, man. <laughs> Yeah, bro, how can you not, man? <laughs> so good. Hell yeah. 
that's why I put it in my three spot. So I think now we'll just move we'll move over to Mike for his three spot. Yeah. Already mentioned, man. Number three, Mass made me do it. That shit is hard. Who was that? It's like the that origin. Dude's dude's, yeah. dude's wearing a forever face. He's got to have that fuck song on his yeah, goddamn yeah. list. <laughs> the fucking chorus. That shit is hard. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the creepy shit. The motherfucking uh, Bill's like, so whatever face that you yeah. decide to rock, hope you have fun trying to explain to the cops that. that. The mask yeah, man. Yeah, this shit is hard, man. It's dope how all the verses lead into that, that the chorus yeah. of it of the mask yeah. maybe do it. It all leads up every fuck time they end. It's the, and then it's waiting for the chorus to pick up. It's fucking dope, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Funny, funny thing about that song, and I'll say this. So, uh, whenever I, whenever that song dropped, um, I'd actually just gotten my first face. Uh, it was oh, um, shit. it was the first two point one. It was a two point one. It's actually it's all downstairs, but um, it was uh, it's two point one. Uh, and uh, so I took a, I took a little picture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, buddy, that's her. Uh, yeah, buddy, that's her. That yeah, was dope. Downstairs. <laughs> yeah, bro, your shit's fresh. Um, <laughs> you know, I have to admit, dude, it kind of sucks because as I love that one. Well. I, 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 so real quick, I uh, took a picture and I put it in the alleyway and it got love. But that's the first picture that actually Lee actually commented on because I I quoted his verse. You know, stab him through raps him in, watch the blade on my clothes, watch the yeah. black cross through, get my jacket out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. um, I I know so that I you know put in my little shit and I actually misquoted his verse, his, his, his lyric. <laughs> so I think I remember ever, that. I think I remember yeah. that. The first time ever having an interaction with AXE was due to that song, and I fucked it all up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh fuck! I'm like, well, this is embarrassing. He was mad. He was mad fresh, but he's like, dude, I have to get my shit all the time. I'm like, all right, great. <laughs> I do that. I do that all the time with lyrics, man. And anybody that says they down a fucking line, just all you gotta do is look online. There's there there is no there is no rap genius or anything that consistently has all the verses yeah. correct. They yeah. get mad fucking shit wrong. So if yeah. Google yeah. can't fucking do it, nobody can. Right, <laughs> right, right. 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 I, I like Joey's verse. You know, he has a bully. He follows him home. Fucking steals his Nintendo. Yeah. He gets a fucking cane from a shin bone. Yeah, it makes cane from shin bones. Yeah. It is yeah. grimy, man. The Joe, verse is Joe, grimy. Joe was like, I masturbate to the, what is it? I masturbate to the thoughts when I had, or what is it? I masturbate to their faces or flashbacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah like, that's the flashbacks. He's like, yeah, the parents were, I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. gutter. I'm like, yeah, that's <laughs> the hell, bro. I can't believe they got away with that in a music video because it showed, like, it shows. Like, <laughs> 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 I was like, damn, okay, okay, you too. Right. And, and you didn't even have to say that you were fucking over 21 eight times to watch that one. I know, it's not even age gated. Like, damn. I mean, don't age gate, but still, it's like, whoa. All right, uh, yeah, I guess my number three is, um, was actually already mentioned as well. Uh, life, let it fucking end um yeah i, I don't know I, I i just really love this song i really love bill's verse bill's verse is really dope to me uh where he's like i find it funny that's why i'm laughing we live our lives for money and status you must be kidding matter of fact nope i truly hate the living if you think it's a joke i just i don't like his verse is his verse is killer um i mean everybody killed it the hook is really fucking hard too um we talked about it quite a bit already but yeah, it's one of my favorites on the album as well. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, my number three is gonna be Donna. Sitting here depressed, sitting here depressed. And it's borderline pathetic. I was with her when she put a knife in her neck, knife. But now we granted that sound embedded in brain waves. She took a life that I can't change. What if I could have took that blade? All I had to do was look that way instead. I was trying to make a name. Trying to make a name. Now I'll never escape that shame. Escape that shame. With picture on the wall. I'm about to hang like that frame. Tied the noose like I tied the knot when I find the truth. The lies will stop. Staring at this photo album. Got me reminiscing on days that I forgot. My promise I intend to keep. Said I would never leave you alone.
is sad with me, and like I, 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 I know you can bring my girl up, but you know, this is actually a song that we're able to kind of like get us to find something to bond, I guess, with. Because whenever they dropped the Donna, she was like, she wanted to go ballet, and I actually it got taken out of my cart. <laughs> so, <laughs> this, and I haven't found one. I mean, I got one now. Um, shout out to my boy Zach, but um, I was able to get her one, but um. You know that that shit. You know, and I guess the well. For, first, first off, the visuals were ill. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for Donna, that shit was fresh. I don't understand monoxide, and I don't really, I don't really understand it. Like, and if you if you watch the video, then you can hear monoxide in the video. But other than that, you know, well, I'm he does the chorus. You can't. But on the, yeah. I feel on the CD, you really can't hear him. I don't know. I mean, it might just be me, but like it said, featuring monoxide. I'm like, where? But and you watching the video, I'm like all right, you can. But then you can really hear them. So I mean, maybe it's just me. I don't know. But um, to me, that was a dope visual. Um, the storytelling aspect behind it, you know, I liked a lot. Um, so uh, yeah, you know that that one, I guess I put that as my number three. Just like you know, I don't know. I I just, I just feel like it's a song that you can kind of. I don't want to say it's relatable because it's not really for me ideally. But like, you know. It, you you can close your eyes listen to that song and really paint a picture, and I feel that you know that that's that's ill. You know when when Bill came in sitting here depressed, you know, and um, to me like just like the like the the, the storytelling aspect behind it, I think is is really official, man. You know, and my girl likes it too, so now she's a fucking Zuli gal, so that's pretty ill. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's my number three. Moving up to my two spot now. It's already been talked about, so we only got to spend a lot of time on it. Blood Moon, it was the first single. And like I said, everybody was kind of wondering what it was going to sound like with Slasher Dave. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, I'm going to like this album. And even just the first, like, just the way the song start, starts out, I appreciate you. That's why I need to save you from this world that loves to hate you. I know a place I can take you. Just fuck, man. Just right off the bat, man, that fucking shit just draws you in. And you're like, yep, I'm ready for the rest of this shit. Right. So I'll put, I yeah. got to put that on this list. So I'll put it in my two spot. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Right number two. Shit. Nails. Motherfucking nails, dog. You know, it's fucking like I said, Billy Obey is my favorite, but Lee Cobble, man. You know, I cut my yeah. motherfucking hands up for a suicide prevention. Hell yeah. That shit is fucking gully. Fucking the fucking Undertaker theme at the end, too, dog. Like, come on. Yeah. Shit yeah, I had on our on our top five verses, uh Lee Carver's verse on that was I think my number two on that. So yeah, yeah not even mad yeah. at that. Shit is hot. Mausoleum fucking dominates, bro. Yeah. Amazing album. And, uh, yeah, Nails is my number two, man. All right. Um, then that brings us to my number two, which is uh, Rituals of Rot. Let my insides in a pot. 
he's stuck in my teeth. I think to that point, it was like their most visual, most storytelling, storytelling, yep, dr- driven song. Um, it's got the zombie reference uh, from uh, I think that's on Psycho, um, and I love uh, I love Joe's verse. Where it's like, uh, my ankle drags, it's painful to walk fast, and Tessa's dangle getting tangled in the tall grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that whole verse is, like, so visual and so descriptive. Um, yeah, it's such a killer track. Number two. Just chime in on that, Rituals. Dude, I... Um... I do like that song, but for me, and I mean, Mike, you might be able to feel me, but like in your car, that's one, like it almost kind of drives me crazy. Just like, the, <laughs> like no, I, I, I fuck with the song. I love it. But like, like for me, like at a high volume, it's kind of like, it almost like, so it, it kind of like turns me <laughs> off a little bit. I won't lie. Like I love, I love the track, but it kind of turns me off. I'd be like, all right, bro, like this is kind of like cringy almost, you know. But just, it's, <laughs> it, it's just, it's just like that, that nah, 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 like that, that just kind of gets to me personally. So I, I think that's, actually, I think. I think that's done intentionally kind of throughout the album. I've noticed the people that have any beef with the album say that. And I think that's almost done intentionally by Slasher Dave. I, I kind of compare it to the uh, Jaws music. Like it's trying to give you an uneasy feeling when you hear it. And I think that's why they do that shit. Because I've heard, I have heard people complain about that, the, really? about li- reviewing this album. So I think, but I think that was intentionally done to give you that uneasy feeling, kind of like whenever you start hearing the down. Uh, I think it's, I think that's what it is. That's just, be, Ro- that's just purely speculation. <laughs> Did Ron Bone say it's too uh, bassy or some shit? It's some shit like that he said. He was basically saying the same thing though. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it do it kind of it gives you like that, uh, that. Uh, <laughs> Like right after a balloon feeling, like you know. Like, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, but like, <laughs> yeah, like I love the song. I said the shit's fresh, but so I mean, if, if that's the case, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm. It's happy. I mean, I'm happy knowing that I'm not the only one that I guess picked up. Yeah, that one. I've I've heard other people say that. Like you said, Rombone said it. Okay, hell yeah. Yeah, I think like I don't know. It, 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 it's it's not necessarily a song I would maybe listen to in my car. Just because, like, when I listen to Rituals of Rod, I like to like listen to the lyrics. You know what I mean? I like to hear the story going along with it. So that's a song that needs a video. We talked about it in our songs that should be video. That needs a fucking video. Oh, uh, dude, my number two. So it's actually gonna be Random Max, and you know, all we spoken about. And the thing about this song, and like, I mean, like, and, you know, me and Mike are pretty much on the same uh, aspect of like the beat and then just like the like just the whole layout of the track. But you guys remember uh, Psycho Jesus back in the days? So he had that track called Random Max. Dude, I still play that song. So it was dope to kind of get something else to go with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but just like the whole, um, just the whole base, the whole storyline of the song, you know, everything about Random Max. Yeah, that's that's my number two for real. Yeah, and, and just 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 the, the beat behind it. You know what I'm saying? The pianos, like the everything that goes with it. Um, and then you say like like in Bill's verse, you know. And like we saw girl, you know, oh good, he grabbed the hoodie. Yeah, both yeah. that shit was just so that shit was just gutter to me, man. Yeah, yeah. So that's my number two, definitely. Yeah. The gunshots. Yeah, Perfect man. Like, like, like we say, it's like a riders track, and I mean, like it kind of mm-hmm. gives you like that vibe, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, so shout to production on that one. Oh yeah. Move it up to my one spot now. Already been talked about by Raz. It'd be Dawn of the Dead. I love the fucking feel of that song. It feels fucking eerie to me. It almost reminds me of like the brainless, kind of the brainless chorus or even like Amy's in the attic. It's just got that uneasy feel about it. And then the verses, they're really fucking dope too. The one she's waiting for me, levitating on a cemetery hill, yeah. try to negotiate, but she's coming for me still. Like it's just got that eerie theme throughout it. And now that the weather's kind of changed to like fall time weather, like, I always go to, like, Hollow Wicked tracks whenever that happens, and I, f- I found myself going back to this track. This was, I think this was number four whenever we initially started talking about doing this list. I think it was number four. And then in the last week, since it's turned, like, fall-time weather, th- that song just goes so fucking perfect with fall that I put it at my one spot. Yeah, you know, like, you saying that, Mausoleum came out at the perfect time, man. Like, because the whole album is kind of like that. The whole album yeah. is very like spooky like, vibes, you know like, what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like Riddle Box. It just sounds best in fall time weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And anytime, any, 
and that song gives me those vibes. So anytime some fucking song gonna give me like a Riddle Boss vibe, that's fucking gonna be my number one. So definitely put yeah, Dawn of the Dead at my number one. Except Rigor Rectus, like I said, which is a summertime song. <laughs> you think maybe that was intentional? Maybe that's why they work with Sasha Dave so heavily. I mean, I mean, I mean, it, it, if not, then that was the way it worked out was dope because you know you pick someone like Slasher Dave, drop your album in October, you give those vibes off. It's almost like a, a I want to say, an October Halloween mm-hmm. classic. But yeah. if there was ever an album to play that wasn't about Halloween, it's this is the best album to play around fall. You yeah. Know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it it came, definitely came out at the best time. It makes you wonder if like that was intentional. If yeah. not, then I mean, you know, that's yeah. So, Happy yeah. accident then, yeah. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Mausoleum gonna sound really fucking good at Camp Zool out in the fucking cold of the of the wilderness bumping that yeah. shit. Fuck yeah, yeah. man. That's the yeah. fall time fucking anthems. Number one for me. Woke up depressed, pissed and upset. Rather ride away in my deathbed and stay. Be honest, I'm an angry, depressed motherfucker, and that shit is hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, you know, it's just hard. I, I don't want to interject with you, Mike, but yeah, that's my number one as well. So I mean, we'll just get it out there. But yeah, dog, yeah. I'm with you 100, percent you know, and and um, that's another one. Now, and that that song also has like that wah, wah, you know what I'm saying? So I get yeah. what you're saying, um, Brandon, and like t- trust me, yeah, I, I definitely dig it. Um, but that one, you know, um. Just, just like Mikey right, dog. Like angry, depressed motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So like that shit woke up depressed, pissed, and upset. <laughs> it's just like, yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But yeah, man, I'm with you, dog. Definitely number one, yeah. Uh, and that that slaps live. Their live performance of Deathbed is it's crazy too. And the fucking end with the scratch and Deathbed. That that shit's fucking yeah. hard. That shit, yeah. That shit hit for me too. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. That shit hit. Uh, yeah. And of course, got the video that you gotta oh, say that you're man. fucking over twenty one eight times to watch. It's so fucking good. <laughs> fucking Bill, like fuck all the yeah. blood pouring out. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, dude, I don't know, man. Whenever that shit with Lido. Yeah, I with Lee's face. The illest, yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, Lee's oh, face melts and shit. That shit was the illest, man. Like, yeah, that, like, just dope. Like, yeah, that shit was the illest. Dog. It's like and a like, street. It's a. It's like a street trash melt. You've never yeah. seen street trash, but it's like a street yeah. trash melt. So dope. Yeah, that that's another one. You know, the visuals. You know, I don't want to say visuals make the song, but it's nice whenever the visuals um, uh, compliment. Compliment. Th- thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Luke. Compliment the song so well, it just makes it so much better. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely made me like the song more, though. I can say that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is. Like you said, the visuals definitely help, and that's yeah, the thriller. That's the thriller of the underground. The video went perfect with the song. <laughs> like you could have made yeah. a better fucking video for that song. Yeah. And the way they did it too was pretty ill. It was nice seeing like some of the uh, behind the screen shots and shit afterwards. Um, so it, it's like I mean, it's old school cool. slasher film shit. It's yeah, super dope. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, my number one. It's been talked about quite a bit. Blood Moon and Back. I, I fucking love this song. And I have kind of sentimental feelings about this song because this is, it was the first single, but it was also the first song I heard the first time I went to the church. Bill played it for me. And like, it's a fir- I, you know, I, I don't know what Mausoleum's going to sound like. I don't have any idea. And then this, this starts up. And it's just like, like the uh, you know, uh, slid it slow and shit. I'm just like, I'm like, oh shit. I'm I'm like laughing like a schoolgirl. I'm like laughing like a schoolgirl hearing this song because I'm like, this is 
this is fucking exactly what I fucking wanted. This song is brutal as fuck. If you really like listen to it, like, and, and like, I love Joe's verse. Joe's verse at the end is really fucking ha- hilarious. Like, I just want to fuck you underneath the blood moon tonight as you die and your last words can be, I love you. And he just fucking goes, it's just, it's, I don't know why, but his verse, all the verses in this song just get fucking stuck in my head. Carver's verse is really fucking brutal as well. Uh, the chorus gets stuck in my head all the time. I had a fucking forever face com- customized to look like the graphic for this fucking song. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah, this is just, uh, you know, hands down, it's been, it's been my favorite track off Mausoleum ever since I heard it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, this song needs a music video as well. <laughs> T- Tom Martino. I mean, this would, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you could get a music video like this on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Choking <laughs> bitches <laughs> in their fucking throat. Yeah, it's, it, it involves a lot of violence against females. So <laughs> I don't know, but you know what? Put it on Vimeo or something. That'd be canceled it, exclusive right there. It, it got a lyric video where the actual lyrics yeah. are on the screen. So that's. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. No. <laughs> But yeah, that song's dope. It was on my number two spot, so I definitely got no beef with that being at number one. We usually do some honorable mentions, but shit, I think we mentioned damn near every track on the album between our lists. <laughs> the two, the yeah, two I had written, two I had written down was Deathbed and Rituals of Rot, and they got named. Does anybody else have any honorable mentions that get named? Uh, <laughs> Rigorectus, Life, Deathbed. Mm-hmm. Got named, got named, got named. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think the, I think the Matt, only song Matt made me do it was mine. Yeah, yeah. The, the only songs we didn't talk about were Deadline and Harvester. Those were literally the two songs we didn't talk about. I mean, Deadline, I, I, Deadline was my shit. Um, I'm trying to think of, because that was one for me too. And there was a part in that song, I'm trying, I'm throwing a blank on it right now. Um, but uh, there was a part in Deadline too that that really resonated with me too. So that one was hard. That one, I guess that would have that would that one was pretty close to making my list. You know, making a top five for me. I, I can't think of reasons why, but regardless, though. But yeah, deadline was definitely that one was that one was close for me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess we didn't really mention this. I mean, I guess this is more of a commentary on the whole album. But this is like the first like storytelling type album that they did, where there's a consistent story told throughout the album at least kind of loosely anyway you know in the beginning they're in the church they get burned down so they go to the mausoleum you know and then the harvester and but then they took this to the extreme with necronomicon 2 where it's a very consistent like wizard of the hood type story going on in that album but um the yeah. capability man which, which is awesome you know you gotta you gotta, gotta think it's it could it, you have to imagine like what goes in to tell it to an album like you know Mausoleum you know I just put this out there real quick you know because to the way the guys work together the way they play with each other is, is awesome and um but for them to be able to stay on track stay on course you know what I'm saying and uh, um just be able to deliver in a way that they do you, it ha- has to take a lot like, the creative process must be. You know, I don't want to say I don't want to say, I don't want to say grueling, but I mean it, it must be. I mean, fuck, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's not, but you have to you have to think that for as well there's, as they. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of moving parts. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that like yeah. have to do their job. You know, I mean, you got Sasha Dave, you got all the boys. They had I think they had Zombie Aristocrats produce one track on the album as well. And then you got a mix and master the whole fucking thing, and you know all down the line. Um. Then you got to work on all the fresh merch that you put out along with the album. Shout because out I, Rick, man. Yeah. yeah. Is is uh the fr- the face that Mike's wearing? Is that the one that came out with Mausoleum? Yeah. yeah. It's the uh, Shout Dead out Ringer. To room, room. Ninety bucks. I said, nigga, I'm down. <laughs> run it, run it. Uh, yeah. Run uh, yeah. That so, in. so that's the mask that came out. I know there's a there's a rare edition of the CD where it's kind of a. Uh, 
there's like a variant where there's the three of them is in the background. Mm-hmm. So I know that mm-hmm. merch was involved. The uh, jersey, they had like the jersey pack and everything. So mm-hmm. not, not for them dudes, man. It's not even just an album they put out every every time that they got to worry about. It's fucking a forever face. It's the jerseys. It's all the fucking logos. You got eight legs scoring a lot of that now. Mm-hmm. So they're always on top of their game on that shit, man. So yeah, we definitely had to have a one year anniversary celebration of such a classic album in the underground. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny because, uh, I mean, the Blood Moon Drive-In will be happening slightly after this comes out. And that's featuring, like, a whole bunch of Blood Moon <laughs> merchandise with the graphic on a jersey and a beanie, yep. I think. And they got all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> Luke, thinking about, Luke, Luke thinking about driving to Michigan to get his hands on that <laughs> shit. Just for that. and Dalen. <laughs> <laughs> pay <pal-ing>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you talk about... Uh, Coming up, also before we get out of here, talk about Camp Zool. Like we said, DJ uh, Rascal gonna be there bumping this shit on uh, November twelfth to the thirteenth, twenty twenty one, Williamsburg, Ohio. Like we said, it's kind of close to Cincinnati. If you know where Bogarts is, it's about that distance from you. So get there if you can. Tickets, I think it's one hundred and nine dollars for camping and the two day tickets. Not mm-hmm. bad at all. Yeah, it's really like the lineup is crazy. They got fucking everybody is coming out. Blaze, Buckshot, Bunducks, Buckshot Cody Manson, Essa Wayne, Dean, Diabolic, the Monster, uh, shit, Light, Light, light. Yeah. come on, Light, what, Straight what? Jacket, what? <laughs> Slasher Dave, cannot forget the super famous Fun Time guys. They've got like listening parties, Q and A's. They're having a barbecue with Blazewell and uh, Fun Time. It's gonna be man, it's gonna be crazy. Talent show hosted by Super Famous. Yeah, talent show. <laughs> so it's not just it's not just concerts. It's gonna be shit to do the whole fucking yeah, time. It's, and it's actually in the middle of a haunted like like a haunt. So like you can be wearing one of their bracelets and they'll come and fuck up, fuck you up. Like they'll fuck Dude. with you. If you wear the red bracelet, they will like grab you and like take you back to their fucking. It's it's crazy, man. I ain't it's doing like, that shit, but <laughs> it's like one. Of, it's like one of those. <laughs> It's like one of those haunts you see on YouTube or Travel Channel. It's so fucking mm-hmm. crazy. Like like Luke's talking about, you can you can pay a certain amount or whatever and sign up for this thing and the and the spooks, which are basically the people that work in the hunt house, can do anything outside of hurting you they want to. They can pick you up, yeah. drag you out of your tent at four in the morning and throw you underground. Like yeah. they really can do that shit. So if, yeah. so if you're into that, go there and wear that red wristband and fucking yeah. have a blast all fucking weekend. But I'm gonna go there and jam some fucking good ass yeah. music and just enjoy the atmosphere. Like I said, how good is Mausoleum gonna sound out there in the woods at four in the morning with a bunch of Zuba yeah. kids? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, we're talking about shit coming up, coming up on October 17th, 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on the Fago Lovers Network. Myself, Luke the Goon, Mike, and uh, Rombone from the Beneath the Dirt podcast will be ranking the uh, Joker cards. We got all the jo- all the juggalos we can sitting in their votes. We're, we're at or over 100 votes already, so I think it'll be the most comprehensive voting ever for Joker cards, and we'll debut the official rankings October 17th, 8 p.m. right here on Fago Lovers. It'll be live, so jump in the chat, discuss different errors with us because as we rank each error we're gonna we're gonna break down shit talk about memories we had from it so jump in the chat if you want to jump into the uh, live stream at the end of it we'll start getting some of the homies to jump on the live stream make it just a fun ass time before purely speculation here that yum yum bedlam comes out yeah, we're, gonna try, yes. we're, we're gonna get the uh, we're gonna get we'll those see. first those 12 joker cards ranked so definitely check that out october 17th on the Fago Lovers Network, check out Camp Zool. And as always, check out Five Piece every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Fago Lovers Network. Until then, this is Five Piece. I'm the Joker's Gallery. We out. Bang.